Thank you very much. I have to say that I am very pleased to be here and thank the MS Society for inviting me to, and giving me the opportunity to participate in this great celebration. You must be very proud of your achievements and activities. And it's uh, really a privilege to have the opportunity to discuss with you recent advances in the field of cognition in multiple sclerosis that have in a way dramatically changed our traditional view of the importance and the role of cognitive issues in the disease experience of MS people. And from a historical perspective, you know perhaps that in his fundamental description of multiple sclerosis in 1877, Charcot had identified cognitive problems in most of MS patients, you, you can read, and had also identified the functions that are more frequently involved. So everything was there, everything had been, was already written, but we simply ignored for decades. So due to the nature of this celebration, it's important to highlight where we were 50 years ago, where we are now. So 50 years ago, uh, textbooks dedicated only a few lines to uh, MS-related cognitive dysfunction and uh, uh, they uh, described cognitive impairment in MS as relatively rare and mostly associated with the more advanced phases of the disease. This has deeply changed and nowadays addressing cognitive issues is considered an indicator of the quality of the care we provide in our MS center. And there are entire chapters in the books and entire monographies and symposia dedicated to this specific issue. This is a forthcoming symposia specifically dedicated to cognitive disorder in MS. We, host, we are going to host in Florence and they have the honor and the privilege uh, to host in the scientific committee uh, um, among others, Alan Thompson, uh, people who have greatly, uh, who are greatly dedicated and we ha who have contributed a lot, really, to our understanding of this, uh, of this uh, field. So, um, the first issue, uh, I would like to provide a, a brief background information on MS-related cognitive dysfunction and first of all, the neuropsychological pattern. We have to say that uh, cognitive deficits in MS are not generalized, but they involve only a few cognitive domains and uh, uh, perhaps uh, the most frequently involved domain is oh, sorry. information processing speed and attention. We can try to test ourselves. The subject can refer slowed, uh, slowing in mental processes. They refer to be easily distracted, to lose focus while listening. The second area is memory. Uh, the, the most important problem is the acquisition of new information, of new materials, more than the retrieval of materials that have been previously acquired. So uh, the subject can have trouble describing programs watched at the TV, uh, describe what is read, they forget appointments, errands, and instructions have to be repeated. And the third area is that of executive functioning. Uh, executive functions are a series of higher order functions that are extremely important for everyday performance. There can be problem in problem solving, uh, problem in tracking two tasks at the same time, 
problems with planning activities, particularly new activities, and also a reduced fluency in language. Uh, language itself, however, is uh, overall spared and also the general intelligence is in the normal range. So um, Charcot's uh, description was indeed uh, correct and the prevalence of cognitive dysfunction is quite high. We can roughly estimate that at least half of our patients do have some cognitive difficulty, although there is a great intersubject variability with prominent problems in a few subjects and other subjects who remain substantially preserved for quite a long time. Um, cognitive impairment is not exclusively associated with the later stages of the disease, but can be detected in every disease stage and also in every phenotype. For instance, there is recent research documenting cognitive dysfunction, usually mild defects involving a few cognitive domains in early relapsing remitting patients and even in patients who are at the first clinical event, what we call clinically isolated syndromes. Uh, it has been detected in patients with a long-standing disease history and very low levels of physical disability, so-called benign MS. So there can be a clear dis dissociation in a few cases between cognitive problems and physical problems. And it seems to be particularly relevant in pediatric onset MS that, as you know, is receiving growing attention worldwide. It's a rare condition, approximately 5% of the whole MS population. It tends to progress slowly over the long term and it is usually more severe and frequent in the secondary progressive phase this is a longitudinal 10-year study we have performed on a cohort of patients um, at the first diagnosis of MS. You can see that at the study onset, the disease duration was only 1.6 year, no significant physical disability on the EDSS. The patients were untreated, so this is in a way a natural history study. And still, 26% of the patients at this very early stage had some problems, and this was bound to increase uh, in the long term, uh, reaching 56% by the end of the study. And interestingly enough, one of the predictors of the bad cognitive outcome was the shift from the relapsing remitting phase to the secondary progressive phase. This is the model of pediatric MS. It's a quite peculiar model because in this case, uh, the disease occurs during uh, the primary myelination in the uh, CNS in a developing brain. And this is our cohort of Italian children and adolescents. Uh, it's important to note that uh, pediatric cases may be particularly vulnerable to cognitive dysfunction with a huge impact on, on school achievements and everyday functioning that is clearly dissociated from the physical disability and the EDSS that remain quite low and stable. So uh, nowadays, uh, researchers, but also clinicians, are becoming increasingly aware of the great functional impact that cognitive dysfunction can have on the patient's lives and lifestyles uh, involving uh, social and family relationships. For instance, driving skills, that is important, ability to cope with MS-related challenges, ability to benefit from rehabilitation. And uh, it is also an important predictor of the ability of the subject to maintain a gainful employment. So it is associated with both uh, uh, patient costs in terms of quality of life and societal costs due to the unemployment in this population of young uh, subjects. <laughs>